All right, so today's video is about how I redid our pantry. And the goal wasn't to make something that looked really good on Pinterest or Instagram or even YouTube. Yeah, we wanted something that looked better than what we had, but the big thing was we wanted to add more storage so we had more places to put stuff. Uh, but even more importantly, hopefully something that keeps us organized moving forward and that we can actually use on a day-to-day -day basis. So once we got everything cleaned out of the pantry, you can see that we actually have a really nice space here. It's about four and a half feet by six and a half feet. And the problem is there's just four basic shelves, these wire rack shelves that do a decent job, but they really don't keep anything real organized or look great. To solve this, I was really trying to think of what I was going to store in this room when I was coming up with my design. So what I came up with was add another shelf for a total of five shelves, install some cabinets so that we could tuck stuff away out of sight, and then also that would create kind of a bar top area, a kind of a coffee bar type of feel where my wife could put that kind of stuff, and then also we could tuck away some of the bigger appliances that we have sitting out on our countertop in the main part of our kitchen. Lastly, we wanted to change it up a little bit. So I think this dark blue cabinet and lower shelf color is gonna look kinda cool. First thing to do was to remove all the wire shelves. And honestly, they came out really easy. It was just more angering than anything. Uh, there was about 80 of these little wall anchor clips and not a single one of them hit the stud. They were just all drywall anchors. So then to remove the drywall anchors, I found out the hard way. It's a whole lot easier if you try to pry that little pin out first and then remove the drywall anchor. If you just pull the drywall anchor, you're gonna create an even bigger hole in your wall. With what felt like a million holes in my wall, I went and got some joint compound to try to fill in these holes. And I'm no expert drywall repair guy, but what did seem to work the best was taking the, the back end of the putty knife and pounding in that hole so you have an even bigger recessed area. And then I take the putty knife and I really force some of that joint compound deep into the hole. And then I go back over top of it and put a nice skim coat on it. Then while the joint compound was drying, I went down and removed some of the baseboard trim. I just did this in the areas where I was installing cabinets so that they would sit flush against the wall. Then once the joint compound was dry, I came back with this sanding block and 80 grit sandpaper. And I just sanded these in a cross hatch pattern pretty lightly. Uh, just trying to take off the high spots and get them as smooth as possible. The one problem I always have is I use way too much compounds, so I have this huge amount to sand off the wall. And really the only downside with that is it just takes longer and you make a heck of a mess. With everything cleaned up, the next thing I needed to tackle was relocating that air vent. Conveniently, it was located right underneath where I wanted to install one of those cabinets, so I had to do something about that. To do this, I went to Lowe's and I bought these two pieces of aluminum ducting metal, and I bent them up in such a way that I had, I created kind of a tube where air would enter in the one side and then be deflected out the front. Um, I really had no idea what I was doing. So I kind of just cut these and bent them to fit together. And then I nailed them into where the old vent came out. It was kind of cool how this fit together. Uh, it fit in the two channels on either side. And honestly, this is one thing that I wasn't even really thinking about when I designed the pantry, but it was probably one of my favorite things that I created here and no one will ever even see it. Then with the first cabinet loosely in place, I could measure over from that cabinet to the ductwork that I just created. Then I took that measurement and transferred it over to the next cabinet, marked out the size of the ductwork, and used a multi-tool to cut out the hole. With the cabinets in place and clamped together, I'm gonna to attach them together using what I would call these double threaded screws uh, to screw them both together. I'm doing this by pre-drilling and then putting these screws in from both directions through the solid frames of the cabinets. Then I move to the back of the cabinets, marking out the locations where the studs are, and then using a little bit different screw that almost has a washer built into it, and I'm screwing these into the studs in the wall. Out in the garage, I start milling down a bunch of 2x4s to create the cleats that are going to go on the wall, and then the center support pieces that are going to go in the center of the shelves. And I don't have a jointer, so I run them on edge through the planer as well, not great, but it still gets me a relatively square edge. Then I take them to the table saw and cut them to width. With a bunch of these wall cleats and supports ripped down to size, I took them back over to the workbench, marked out as many of them as I could to length, and cut them using the miter saw. Back 
Back inside, I double checked my measurements for all the shelf locations. Then I got out the stud finder and started marking out the locations for all the shelves. To speed up this process, I used a vertical board and marked from one place that I found a stud to another place, just so that I didn't have to use the stud finder for every shelf to find every stud. Using a countersink bit, I pre-drilled the holes where I was installing screws to attach the cleats to the wall. Normally I did the center screw first to hold the cleat on the wall, then I came back with a level making sure that the board was level, and also checking the distances in between each one of the shelves. I had to be as accurate as possible with this because I know the way that my design was laid out, I didn't have a whole lot of room to play with. I repeated that same process on all five sections that I had to do. For the top of the shelves, I went a little bit overkill. So as you can see here, I'm using the track saw to cut out these pieces. Then I'm coming back with a multi-tool just to clean up the corner. Uh, this is a four by eight sheet of three quarter inch oak plywood. I went three quarters of an inch because I really wanted the strength and I thought that that would strengthen up the shelves a lot. I went oak plywood because one, I like the grain pattern. All of our cabinets are oak cabinets that are painted so it'll have a very similar look. But then the other reason was the price wasn't as different as I thought. So cutting the top of the shelves in this L shape definitely made installing them and cutting them out a pain in the butt. But I think overall in the end it was worth it. I think it definitely strengthened up the corner and made the shelf stronger. And then there was only one joint per shelf. The only thing that I had to do differently was I built the frame second underneath it so that it lined up a little bit better. To attach all the supports together I used a bunch of pocket hole screws. Building the support frame of the shelf actually worked out really nice. It was really easy to line up the boards with the pre-cut pieces of plywood, clamp them in place, and screw them together. Then I came back and added a bunch of small supports in between the major pieces of the frame. They really won't add that much strength to the shelf. They just offer a support piece for the more flimsy plywood that I'm going to put on the bottom of the shelf. I will admit I was pretty happy with the gaps that I was able to control. Uh, they came out pretty good. But then the walls were not exactly so straight. And I didn't do such a great job scribing these shelves when I put them in. So I have a pretty decent gap next to the walls here. Down below, I continue building this frame the same way, between the cabinet and the back far wall. Then I installed the piece of plywood for the bottom shelf, and then built the frame underneath it, just like I did for all the other shelves. Here's a look at how I was able to get the tops of the plywood shelves to, to line up so well or get such a tight joint. Um, I would lift both pieces of plywood up and they were cut just slightly too long and then push them down at the same time and they would kind of force away from each other. They pushed into the drywall a little bit on either side, but it really made a nice tight, tight joint. Uh, the only thing I had to fix on this one was just to smooth up that front edge. The frame for the countertop went in the same way. I just didn't have to build as many supports on this one because the countertop was going to have its own strength. This really just held like kind of a fascia piece on the front and then does kind of help lock the different pieces of the countertop together. For the countertop I'm using this butcher block that I bought from Lowe's. It's 25 inches wide and an inch and a half thick and I found using the track saw to cut it works really well just as long as you don't support it like I did here. Then after messing around with it for a little bit, I was able to get the first piece installed. Then for the other walls, I not only had to cut it down to length, but I had to cut it down widthwise as well. Uh, using blue painter's tape really helped keep this from chipping uh, because I really wanted these cuts accurate and these boards to line up as flush as possible.
With both of the side two pieces of butcher block installed, I took the center piece out and cut a bunch of pocket hole screws in either side of it. These pocket hole screws are really what's going to lock the three pieces of butcher block together. Then I use the same method as before with the plywood, lift both pieces up and then push them down together and they fit nice and snug. Then as I've said in some of my other videos, I'm no electrician, but as far as electricity goes, what I'm doing here isn't the most difficult. Uh, I'm using a box to mark out two receptacles on this wall and one on the opposite wall, and I'm tapping into an existing circuit, 20 amp circuit, that only has three receptacles on it in my kitchen. There is a GCFI in line, uh, so we're covered there if we would need it. And then you can see that I'm just using a drill and a multi-tool to cut out the shape of the box. The box ends up sliding right in, and then there's these two screws that you screw in, and there's little tabs that lock into the drywall and hold it in place. And then with everything wired up, I try to neatly push those wires back in there and screw the outlet in. Came back with my 18 gauge nailer and nailed down the plywood to the frame. I used inch and a half long nails, and that was probably about the max that I would want to use for 18 gauge. Uh, one thing that I did get away with here was I didn't take into consideration when I when building this the size of the nailer, and I barely had room on this shelf to get the nailer into the back areas. This is the plywood that I'm using for the bottom. I couldn't find any oak plywood that was this thickness. Uh, this was also the thinnest plywood that I could find. This is an eighth of an inch pine plywood and I'm cutting them again to that same L-shaped size. To install the plywood to the bottom of the shelves, I used a much shorter nail. I think these are only five eighths of an inch, yet again, 18 gauge. Um, and this stuff is really flimsy, so it helped to clamp it on beforehand. And then that's why I have all those support pieces in here is so that I can put a lot more nails on this so that it doesn't sag down from the bottom of the shelf. Just to make sure the fronts of the shelves were flush, I came back with a belt sander for the large areas and then a chisel in the corners just to make sure the two pieces of plywood were as flush with the support frame as I could. Then using some wood glue in my finger to spread it around and the air nailer again, I installed three quarter inch oak boards to the front of each shelf. The goal was to keep that common oak grain pattern while also dressing up the front of the shelves. I was really impressed with the way that it looked, but the thing that I wasn't expecting was how much strength it actually added to the front of the shelf. Then using a nail set or a nail punch, I drove all the heads of the nails below the surface of the wood and came back using some wood putty to fill in all those holes. Uh, this is the point where you really start to realize how many nails you drove into this thing with the nail gun. It was fun before, uh, but created a whole lot of work right now. To help dress up the underside of the frame above the countertop, I ended up going back and using these plugs that you can fill the pocket hole screws with. Not 100% perfect, but they do fill in these holes so that when I paint over them, it'll be harder to tell that they're even there. A few hours later, and once all the wood filler was dry, I put my mask on, uh, got out the sander with 120 grit sandpaper, and went over and sanded all the shelves. I closed the door so I'd hopefully keep the noise down so I wasn't gonna wake anybody else that was trying to sleep in the house.
I also sanded the joints between the butcher block. There wasn't a whole lot here to do. Uh, they came together pretty well, but I just wanted to make sure that that transition was as good as I could get it. Then I switched sandpaper to 220 and went over the entire butcher block again. From Lowe's, it was already really smooth, but I just wanted to make sure I kind of took it even to that next level. And then at the end, I was actually pretty happy that I kept the door shut. Not only did I not wake anybody up, but I kept all the dust in the pantry and kept it from getting all over the rest of my house. Once all the dust was cleaned up, it was time to paint. And I probably overcomplicated this, um, but I knew in installing all the shelves, I was going to jack up the walls. So I waited to paint the walls until the end. For the walls, I used the same ultra white color that I used for everything else, but I used a satin sheen to hopefully try to hide some of the imperfections. Then for the shelves, I used a specific cabinet oil enriched paint uh, that worked out really good. The only problem was that the oak plywood and these oak fronts were really sucking up the paint. So I had to go over it two or three times. Um, to do all the cutting in, I used a two and a half inch angled brush and I really like the way that that works. And then these mini low nap rollers really put on this, the paint smooth and using a semi-gloss finish really made the shelves really glossy and pop and they actually kind of stood out from the walls even though that they were the same color. And then this is the first time that I've ever painted with a color so bright is this one. Um, we, we really like this blue color and we think it looks really cool and something really different, but it definitely came out way more blue than we thought. I thought it was going to be a little bit darker than this. Then to cover up some of the imperfections between the shelves and the walls, uh, in the areas that you could see, I caulked those gaps. First, I laid a, a bead of caulk on there and at first I used one of these fancy tools that worked okay and it, it did okay, but I'll be honest with you. I think I got better results just using my finger. And yet again, I'm no pro at this, but it definitely helped and, and made these gaps look a whole lot better. After two coats of blue on the shelves, cabinet frames, and doors, one coat of white on the walls, and then three coats of white on the shelves, I was pretty happy with the way that it was looking. Then I couldn't help myself and I came back and I re-sanded the entire butcher block again with a 320 grit sandpaper. I was really just trying to get this thing as smooth as possible because this is going to be our main contact point. After that I used a tack cloth and wiped down the entire surface to remove as much dust as I could. The finish that I'm using for the countertop is this Watco butcher block oil. I really like how easy it is to put this on. I'm just using a rag and trying to wipe it on as evenly as possible. Uh, the other thing that I like about this is the level of protection that it provides. It's not going to offer the same level of protection as something like a polyurethane, but it does penetrate into the wood and it does help with if we spill, if we would spill something on it like water or anything else like that. For inside of the pantry, I think this is going to work perfectly fine. And I also really like the color that it turns the wood. While the finish was drying, I thought it was a good time to install the receptacle covers. I then pre-drilled the doors and cabinets and installed the hardware. For these, we went with like a brushed gold color, which was new to me, but I think goes really well with the blue. The next day I came back with a 320 grit sandpaper and a sanding block and just lightly sanded the surface of the butcher block again, just to prep it for the next coat. To remove the dust, yet again, I used a tack cloth, put on a second coat, and then I repeated that same process again to put on a final third coat. After the third coat, my wife and I really liked the way that it looked, and so that's where we stopped. Then about the last thing I had to do was the kick plate underneath the cabinet, and I think most people have the kick plate the same color as the cabinet. But since the vent cover was white and I was using a piece of white trim molding that blended in with the rest of the trim, I just left it white and I don't think anybody's really ever going to notice. And then overall with the pantry, I'm, I'm really liking the way that this looks, at least when there's nothing in here. So now at this point, it's about a week later and we've been going through all the stuff that we had jammed in here and getting rid of stuff that we haven't 
seen or knew we that we had for a really long time. Uh, trying to organize things, we bought some some of these clear containers up here, and then some of these baskets. Um, if you like any of the stuff that we're using here, I'll throw the links down in the description. I can't guarantee they're great because I've only been using them for a week, but they're so far keeping us organized, and we really like the way that this is starting to lay out. That being said, I just wanted to take a second and kind of explain what I did and why I did it, and then kind of what the next steps for this project are going to be. So like I alluded to at the beginning of the video, I made a very specific set of plans, and each shelf had a specific size and location that it needed to be, and all those measurements came from the things that I was actually going to put in the pantry. Uh, so the top shelf is where we're putting all of our appliances, the stuff that we don't use very often. Those are getting put up there. And so what I did was measure each one of the appliances, and the tallest one we just added about a half inch to, and that determined that shelf height. Then the shelf below it is for all of the storage containers, those clear containers. Uh, we measured the height of one of those, I think it's like 11 and a quarter, added a half inch or three quarters of an inch to that, and that determined that shelf height. The shelf height below it is where we plan to put all the baskets and then our canned goods. Then yet again, took the measurements of one of those baskets and two canned goods stacked on top of each other, and conveniently they were about the same, and added you know, a half inch or so to that, and that determined the height of that shelf. Where I ran into problems is that one side of my pantry was about three quarters of an inch to an inch higher than the other side of the pantry. So what ended up happening was I made the top three shelves the original heights that I wanted them to be, and I stole the space from the countertop height. And that's the reason that I didn't put a piece of plywood on the bottom of the shelf that's above the countertop is because I wanted to leave that open so that we had a little bit more room. If I had a piece of plywood on the bottom there, putting the top piece of the blender on, you couldn't actually get it on top. Uh, the other issue that we were going to run into was like the KitchenAid. When you lifted the top of the KitchenAid mixer up, you were going to be really close to that top piece or it wasn't going to potentially fit. So I just left that piece of plywood off. It leaves an open recessed area up under there and everything should work perfectly fine. So far we're good. And then the other thing that you can see in here, it is nice, neat, and organized. Um, and it does kind of look nice. I'll give it that. It looks way better than those wire rack shelves. But this is going to be far from an Instagram, Pinterest looking pantry here in the next month, two months, six months. Like this is going to get used. We actually live here. And, you know, things look good in pictures and they look good in video right now. Um, I will keep you guys updated. And then, like with a lot of my videos that I end up posting, I can't complete the whole thing right at one time and be done with the whole thing. There are other things that are going to happen in this pantry that I'll, maybe I'll make a part two video of, or maybe I'll just post little pictures here and there showing you the things that I'm going to update. Uh, but this pantry's not done either. It looks nice. It's functional, functional, it's usable, um, but it's, it's far from done. So some of the things that I need to, to continue to work on here is lighting. The light that's in here is not a great light. Um, it, it does provide light, but I'd, I'd like to do something a little bit fancier. And then the big thing is that I want to do some like under cabinet, or in this case, under shelf lighting. There's a whole lot, bunch of different ways you can go with this. I was looking at using Philips Hue strip lighting, and I love the few, Philips Hue stuff for a lot of different stuff that we've been doing. Yes, it's stupid expensive, but it just works. And so that's what I'm kind of planning on doing right now. So the next thing that I want to do is replace the door. Uh, it has one of those accordion like closet style doors on it, which just isn't real great. Um, what I'm looking for is kind of a normal type of opening door, only like a half glass door, where it has a big glass window at the top, kind of frosted glass. Maybe it has something etched or a sticker on it that says pantry or food room or something like that that kind of just dresses things up and makes it look a little bit nicer, a little bit more quality. And then the last thing that I have planned for this is actually a backsplash. So on the countertop, between the countertop and the first shelf, I want to do a backsplash. The only problem is we don't like the backsplash that we have in our kitchen and we haven't 100% made up our mind on what backsplash we want to go with in the rest of the kitchen and I would like this to match the backsplash that we have in there. So when I replace the backsplash and maybe the cabinets and all kinds of other junk in my kitchen, when I do that project and do the backsplash out there, whatever I do out there is what we're going to put in here. All right, so if you're still watching this video at this point, I really appreciate it and I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked it. Um, if you want to leave a comment down below, that would be awesome. If you want to hit the thumbs up button, that always helps. If you want to see the future of what this project, you know, turns out to be, or uh, many of the other projects that I plan on doing around here, you may want to subscribe. Uh, but other than that, I hope to see you guys in another video.